In the current segment, I actually want to talk about another type of garbage collection algorithm, which I did not talk about last week. And that's known as the Cheney algorithm. It's actually, it has a more generic name. It's called the two finger approach, or the two finger algorithm. It has many variants, but I want to talk about the basic uh, algorithm. And then from that, you can read on if you want about all the variants. So the way it works is the following. We have a, we have a uh, memory. And suppose that our memory is actually divided into two parts. Let's call the two parts, the two, the two first part and the second part is called the from part. We have the two and the from. Now the way it works mm -hmm. is the following. We go and we allocate um, memory every time you do a, a new, every time you, you actually go and you, and you make a, you, you, know, you ask for dynamic memory, dynamic heap memory, what we do is we allocate uh, memory from the two, notice. So slowly memory will actually fill up, which makes a lot of sense, right? Slowly memory will fill up, the two portion will get filled up. Now, not all these guys are actually alive. Some of them already, you know, been, you know, already garbage, what's known as garbage. And some of them are actually alive. Now, again, the definition of alive means that you can get to it from the live set, meaning there's like a runtime stack somewhere and there's globals. And somewhere in the runtime stack, there is a pointer into the heap, into that location. It could very well, very well be that this location leads to that location. That could very well, very, very well happen. But in a sense, that's what the runtime stack is. That's what's known as the, as the live set. That's what's known as the, as the live set. So now we need to ask ourselves what happens when the memory is depleted. Meaning if you ask for another new, there is no way, there's no way to actually get more memory because the two is full. So the first thing we do is we change the name. This becomes the from, and this becomes the two. That's the first thing we do. And why do we have those names? The reason we have those names is because uh, we are taking from the from and putting into the two. What does that mean? Well, we start from the, again from the runtime stack or the globals, which is known as the live set. We start from the live set, which includes the runtime stack and the globals. And we follow them into the heap. We follow them into the heap. So for example, suppose it said here, I'm just throwing, suppose we had the following. Let's just make the example more, you know, more uh, complicated a bit just so we can have a, you know, a nice sample of what's going on. Suppose we had two pointers pointing into the heap. Suppose this, these guy, this guy was also pointing at this memory, just, just assume, okay? And suppose that this guy was also garbage, okay? Now, what we start is we start from the, we have, we put one finger at the first empty location in the two, okay? And we put another finger at the last full location, which in the beginning obviously is the same place, right? It's the last, the first empty one, the last full one actually exactly the same. Now what we do is the following. We follow the live set into the heap and we, we get to see, let's put numbers here. Let's call this nine, 10 and 11. Okay, let's just put that there. Okay, just we can follow them around. Now if we, we, we find the nine, we find the nine and we move it into the heap. Now, one of these pointers will actually move because the next free location, right? The next free location is now over here. That's our next free location, right? That's our next free location. So now we have one finger pointing to the, to the base of the two and one pointer moving ahead. Next, we say, okay, what is the next, uh, per, um, what is the next um, value we can reach from the live set? And we get the 11, which is fine. So we, no, I skipped a step. We move the nine to down here. I skipped a couple of steps, okay. Next, next thing we do is we put a pointer here to the new location where it is. So we can find it if we need to, okay? And we update the pointer at the runtime stack to point at the new location. Meaning 
that if we want to go from the one time stack to find the variable, we can find it. There it is, right? That's the number nine. Now, why do we need to store a pointer at the previous location to the new location? We'll see in a minute. But that's, we did that, we finished step, step one. Step two, we do the same thing for the 11. Notice we copy the 11 down to here. Right? We move the 11 down to here. We put a pointer at the old location pointing to the new location. We move the red finger here that we have, we move it down to the next free empty spot, right? We update the pointer over here. We update the pointer to the new location. And we are finished. Now, once we finished following the, the live set into the heap, we're gonna have a very interesting picture. Notice, in the two, we have all those that can be reached directly from the live set, 9 and 11. We have pointers in the old locations showing where the new locations are. We have the pointers on the heap updated to the new locations. And now we're finished that step. The next part we wanna do is to see if we need to follow through further in. So now notice if we copy, look at the nine, if we actually really look at the nine, the nine had a pointer to right there, right? That's what it had a pointer to. The 11 happens to also have a pointer to the same location. Notice the two, notice the two black, notice the two black arrows that we have at the top, right, over here. So I just made them in blue, just from, from, from different locations, but they're pointed to the same place. They actually pointed to the same place. So now what we do is we start from the first finger, and this is why it's called the two finger approach. That's the reason why it's called a two finger approach. We have actually two fingers or two red arrows that we have. One shows the last, the, the last um, variable that we already dealt with. One shows the first empty spot. So we start from the nine and we say, okay, can we follow from the nine into the heap? And the answer to that is yes, that's the 10. So now we follow the same procedure. We copy the 10 into the first empty spot we move the finger down, okay? We update the pointer, we put a pointer to where the new variable is. And we update the pointer that was pointing to it. We update the pointer that was pointed to it to the new location. Okay? So now, if we ask ourselves at this point in time right now, Right? Is the nine pointing at the 10? Yes. Did the nine point at the 10 beforehand? Yes. Right? So all, so right now the variable nine ten is the way it should be. Everything's okay. Just in a new location in memory. Okay? And then once we finish that, we update this first finger that we had right here. We update the first finger to point at the next variable. Because that's the next one we have to deal with. Now, we say, okay, 11, let's follow 11 into the heap. If we follow 11 into the heap, we find that we reach the 10 up on top and it has a pointer down into the two on the bottom. So we find the new location and we say, okay. So the new location says that 11 has to, we don't have to move anything because the 10 already moved. So the new location says, okay, so just update the pointer. So we update the pointers and here are the pointers updated. And we say that 11 should point at the 10, right? And we can move, we finish the 11 and we can move the finger further down. Now the finger is pointing at the 10. Is the 10, being, can you follow through from the 10 into the, into the from? The answer is no. So the finger moves down another one. Finger moves down another one, right? And now notice what happens, the two fingers are actually pointing at the same location. The minute the two fingers point at the same location, we are finished. And if we actually look at the memory right now, we say, okay, notice that from, let's ignore the top half of the picture and look just the bottom half of the picture. If we start from the wrong time stack for the first location, let's call it location A, and we follow through, it used to point to the nine, which pointed at the 10. It's still pointing at the nine, which is pointing at the 10. If we look at location B, that used to point to the 11, which pointed at the 10. And now it's still pointing at the 11, which points at the 10. 
So we have all our memory the way we're supposed to have it. Now, all of this down here, this is our, our new free list. We will allocate from now on, we will allocate only from the two, just like we did till now. And all the memory up on top is just garbage. I couldn't care less what's there anymore. Notice there's nothing pointing to it anywhere. There's nothing pointing to it anywhere in, in the code or in data pointing to those locations. And therefore, they are not needed. And as far as I'm concerned, they can be recycled. So now we stop and look right now, we, we keep going. And we allocate from the free list every time more and more and more and more. At a certain point in time, again, this will fill up. Some of it will be garbage, some of it will not. Don't know which ones will be garbage, which ones will not, right? And the minute we can't allocate any more memory, we just start the cycle again, but the other way around. We call this the to, we call this the from, and we just do the same thing the other way around, okay? And therefore the memory is actually reclaimed. This is what's known as a Cheney algorithm. It's actually a, a two-finger approach. It's uh, the class of algorithms is called a two-finger approach. And it actually works well in recycling all the data. 